Let's look at how to name Boolean variables and also Boolean parameters correctly. Before that, let's first of all look at variables. We have learned in the last lessons that a variable name should always sound like a noun phrase, such as user, this is a noun, or name, this is also a noun. For Boolean variables, it is a bit different. We should use a verb in the form of to be, so you can prefix it with is, was, or will. Let's start with the prefix is. Here you have, for example, is empty, this is a Boolean, is visible, or is user, is admin. All of these names sound pretty good because you only have two cases. Is it empty? Yes, then you give it true. Otherwise, if it is not empty, then you give it a false. Next, you could give your Boolean variable also a prefix of an auxiliary verb such as has, can, should, or must. Let's also look at some examples for has. Here you could, for example, use has data, has more, has subscribed. Then we also have can. Here you can use, for example, can close, can submit, can access, and so on. Let's also look at should. For should, you can use should forward, should clear, should move. And lastly, we have must. Here you can also use, for example, must save, must sign in, must pay. Notice that these Boolean names always sound like a decision, must save, yes or no, should forward, yes or no, should move, yes or no, can close, yes or no, has data, yes or no. Next to these positive Boolean names, let's also look at some negative Boolean names. Here we have a Boolean name that is called data. So this is a noun and this sounds more like a normal variable. You can simply store here some data inside like a string, numbers, etc. So therefore it is not pretty clear that this is a Boolean. It is not a yes or no decision. A better example is here to use for example has data. Here it is pretty clear. Has a data, yes or no. So you put true or false inside. Let's also look at another example. Here we have the Boolean name empty and this sounds more like a command. And if it sounds like a command, then it means more that it is maybe a method. So you could, for example, use this as a method, empty a list, empty a name, or so on. So this is one interpretation of this name. And the other interpretation is that it can also be a Boolean. So if this is empty, however, since we have here two different meanings, therefore it is not a good name. It should only have one single meaning. And if you choose, for example, is empty, then it has only this one meaning. Is it empty? Yes or no. And you cannot use like a method is empty because a method should always do something and is empty is not doing anything. Let's also look at another example. Here we have again a comment like name show pop up, which is normally used for methods. And as you can see, this can be used as a method to show a pop up, or it can also be used inside of this if statement. So if we show the pop up, and since we have again two different meanings for this show pop up name, therefore don't use such a name, better use a different name such as can show pop up. Here we only have one decision. Can we show this pop up? Yes or no? Then we put true or false inside, has shown pop up, here we also have a decision, yes or no, is showing pop up, here we also have one decision, yes or no. Next for your Boolean variable name, you can also use an active verb. A bad example of an active verb is closing connection. So this is, for example, is it closing a connection? Yes or no. However, it can also sound like the closing connection that you basically save. So this has two different meanings and therefore it is not good to call your Boolean variable like this. Another better option would be an active verb such as closes connection. Here it is also closes the connection, yes or no. However, it cannot be inside of a connection variable stored because closes connection doesn't sound like something that we store there inside. If you want to be on the safe side, then don't use any active verb for your Boolean names. You can also use such other names such as is connection closed, can close connection, has connection closed, etc. Another bad example for an active verb is activated user. It can sound like a Boolean variable. Is this an activated user? Yes or no. However, it can also sound like a normal variable where we store then inside the activated user. A good example of an active verb would be activates user because this sounds only like a boolean so it can only be true or false. However activates user doesn't sound like we are storing there the user inside. Again if you want to be on the safe side then don't use an active verb. Instead use all the other options that you have such as is user activated. Here are even two more good examples of active verb boolean names such as logged in. This is a decision, yes or no, is the user logged in? 
and it doesn't have the meaning that we can store that any other variable type inside. Only a boolean would make sense for this variable name and also such a thing like signed in. Here also we have only yes or no is the decision and no other variable type would make sense for this naming. Let's also look at how to name boolean parameters inside methods and functions or also inside of constructors. First of all, if you pass boolean arguments into your function, method or into your constructor, then make sure that you avoid positional boolean parameters because here right now it doesn't have the meaning of what this true is or what this false is and therefore it is a bad example. Therefore it is a best practice instead of these positional parameters to use use named arguments. Here you see that each of these arguments has a meaning behind them. So is it a user? Is it an admin? And therefore you also need to change your function method or constructor to named parameters. So far we have learned that positional boolean arguments are unreadable since it is not clear what each of these boolean arguments represent. However, there is also a gray zone to use positional boolean parameters and the only case is if you use then named arguments such as you name your arguments before and then you pass it here inside with this it has some meaning on the callable side. But notice this might not be optimal and therefore it is a gray zone to use this approach since here someone can still pass true or false inside and don't use any named arguments and then this is simply bad to read. Next we want to look at named boolean parameters, how to name them correctly. For boolean variables we have learned it is a good practice to use a verb in front of your boolean name such as is scrolling, is paused, these are good variable names. However, for parameters this doesn't sound so good. Therefore you can also omit the verb inside of your boolean parameter name and this looks then like this for example. And of course also change your function, here the parameters also have then the new name. The advantage of omitting the verb inside of your boolean arguments and parameters is that the callable side is then easier to read. Let's see this practical example. Imagine your function name is called scroll down and inside of it you can then define if it should scroll or if it should jump down immediately. If your boolean parameter omits the verb in front then this sounds better instead of just using for example is jumping then the callable side doesn't sound so great. Scroll down is jumping true. You can use it if you like but prefer maybe to use it without a verb. Next make sure to give your boolean names a positive name such as is visible, is enabled, these are positive names compared to negative names that are wrong so such as is hidden or is disabled. The problem with negative boolean names is that if you want to make them positive then it is simply confusing. So if you make it is disabled false then this means it is enabled and this is basically confusing for a reader. If it is hidden is false then it is basically visible and this is also confusing. Therefore never use any negative boolean names. Also negative boolean names are critical insight of logical expressions. Since it is mentally difficult for the reader to perform the double negation such as is disconnected and then we negate it, this means then that it is connected and this double negation is simply difficult to understand. Also using this negative boolean name is empty and then negating it to say that this is basically full or that there are elements inside of it, this is also not good. Instead let's use a better approach, just use a positive boolean name, it is connected so this is more readable than just negating it twice. And for the second case instead of negating that it is empty you can also say that it has for example some data or you can also use this other field is not empty so that it is more readable. Also the advantage is now that if you want to negate this is connected then you simply put your negation in front and it is still easily readable because we only negate it once. Well here you negate it once and then you negate it again and this is simply difficult to understand for the reader. Also there is an exception to this rule in case you use this negative boolean form more often than the positive form then you can also use the negative form instead. For example here logging out, do you want to disconnect from the server, yes or no and most people will choose for example true therefore it is better to call it like this instead of calling it like log out from the server, do you want to connect, this is a positive form and then false. If this is what people call less then it is not so good to use the positive form and prefer to use the negative form instead.